In this section, we'll talk about the chain rule or how to take the derivatives of composite functions or functions known as f of g of x. For example, when one function is literally inside of another function. So, uh, for example, we can have functions of this form like 2x plus 5 squared. So the square power is the outside function and 2x plus 5 would be inside function or square root of x plus 4, for instance. Uh, so here is some review for uh, doing composite functions both back and forth of f of g of x and g of f of x. You can take a look at those. But let's go ahead and go straight to the composite functions on how to work backwards. Let's say if we have a composite function 5 minus x squared to the 3 fifth power, how can we uh, state it as two different functions? Which one is outside and which one's inside? Now by the way, there is more than one way to do this, but we will look at the most obvious one. And the most obvious one is you recall the 3 fifth was the exponent, so x to the 3 fifth is the outside function, literally. And 5 minus x squared is inside function inside of this exponent right here. So you can plug it in for the x and evaluate it. So it's good to know which one's inside and which one's outside. And it's good to identify them. So usually the outside function would be exponent, but of course not always. We'll have uh, exponential and logarithm functions coming up also, which we'll take a look at. So how do we... Uh, well, here is another one, uh, one more example maybe. y equals to negative square root of 13 plus 7x. What would be the most obvious decomposition as two functions? Well, we can have, this actually should be a negative, sometimes there's little typos. Um, it should be negative square root of x equals to a negative, there should be another negative, x to the 1 half power. And the inside function is 13 plus 7x. Okay, so think of the obvious decomposition, for example. So how do we take derivative? Well, this is where we would use chain rule, again, almost quite literally. What we do to take the derivative of f of g of x is first we take the derivative of the outside function, we focus on that, which looks f prime of g of x, notice how we leave g of x intact, times, then we take the derivative of g of x, which looks like g prime of x. And sometimes we can simplify it, sometimes we can't. It just re really depends on the problem. But it does work like chain rule. Like, for example, we have a function y equals 8x to the 4th power minus 5x squared plus 1 to the 4th power. Again, it may be good at first to identify the outside function, which is x to the 4th, and inside, which is 8x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 1. To take the derivative, well, let's take a look. First, we take the derivative of fourth power, which is literally 4, then times the inside intact, as you notice, uh, the g of x, to the third power. So see how I identify this as f prime of g of x, times the derivative of the inside, which happens to be 32x cubed minus 10x. Now notice, nothing we can do to simplify this, because third power is not actually easy uh, to expand. Actually, we could have multiplied 4. You could distribute it. But we will leave it like this for now. Now let's take a look at the next example. y equals 2x cubed plus 9x to the fifth power. Now you can take a pause, uh, pause the video and try what you will get uh, as far as the derivative. Now let's take a look. What do we get? Well, we get 5. Uh, then we have the function inside, 2x cubed plus 9x to the fourth power times the derivative of the inside, which is uh, derivative of 2x cubed, 6x, plus derivative of 9x, which is 9. And again, we'll just leave that as for the example. Now, you can do the same thing with a negative exponent. So let's say we had a function negative 2 times 12x squared minus 5 to the negative 6 power. So you would do the same thing. Uh, negative 2 is a constant. But you would multiply it with a negative 6 power. That's how come we get positive 12 times uh, 12x squared minus 5 to the negative 7. Notice how we decrease the power by 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is derivative of 12x squared. We'll get 24x. Derivative of negative 5, that's just a constant, so that goes away as 0. Now notice we have a 12 on the outside, then we have the 24x in the back here. We can't actually multiply the two terms, especially when it's just one term like this. 
So we'll get 288x times 12x squared minus 5 to the negative 7. So as we get deeper into future sections, we'll probably will simplify like this a little bit, if you can. Uh, now notice we can do even better than that. We can keep 288x on the top and put 12x squared minus 5 to the 7th power in denominator to get rid of the negative exponent, if needed. So sometimes different formats of the answers can be acceptable, just to keep in mind. What if we have a fractional power like 3 half? Well, it works exactly the same way. Notice 45 times 3 over 2. Well, it's just 45 times 3. We got 135 over 2. 3t cubed minus 8 to the 1 half power. Notice how we subtract the 1. Times derivative of the inside, 3t cubed. That's 9t squared. Negative 8 goes away. And again, we can simplify. You can multiply 135 by 9. That's how come we'll get a big answer. Uh, 1215, actually, over 2 t squared, so we just move this term to the front, times 3t cubed minus 8 to the 1 half power. And that's kind of the idea. Now what if we have uh, negative 5 over 2x cubed plus 1 squared? At first, it doesn't look like a regular chain rule problem. In fact, whenever we have x in the denominator, for example, with a power, how do we uh, take the derivative of that power? Well, first we rewrite it as a negative exponent. And now this is where we can pretty much use the power rule to do the chain rule. Okay, so it's kind of the same idea. So again, negative 5, we treat that as a constant, times the negative 2, that's how come we get 10, times 2x cubed plus 1 to the negative third power, times 6x squared. And notice again, you can multiply 6x squared by the 10, and we'll get 60x squared. And then we can put 2x cubed plus 1 to the third in the denominator to complete the problem. So that's it for that one. Uh, sometimes there's more difficult problems, which maybe it could be a challenge problems or maybe bonus problems in the future. How would we do this when the top function at 3x squared minus x, uh, but the bottom function, notice it's a composite function. It's 2x minus 1 to the fifth power. And overall, it looks like a quotient where we will use quotient rule, or sometimes product rule. Or um, well, in this case, it would be quotient because we're dividing. Uh, but the bottom, we need to use chain rule. So at first glance, it looks like a really complicated problem. But there is a little trick you can do. But to start with, we set it up as if we were using quotient rule, which would be good to review from section 4.2. Now notice, we'll start with the denominator squared, but it's fifth power already. So fifth power squared, we actually can multiply the powers and we get the 10th power. That's how come we get 10 right here. On the top, we proceed with the derivative of the top of 3x squared minus x. Uh, that's how come we get 6x minus 1 times exactly the original bottom. Notice with a power and everything. Then we, we have a minus. We do the derivative of the denominator, which would be, if you recall, 5 times 2x minus 1 to the fourth power, but we're not done, that's just the outside, times the derivative of 2x minus 1, which is just 2. Then times the, uh, the original top function, 3x squared minus x. So it looks like a lot, but do not worry. Uh, let's take a look. Now here is the trick where I would introduce. Um, notice how I factored out 2x minus 1 to the fourth power. So you actually take the smaller power to factor out to the front, because that's in common, the fourth power in both terms, the first one and the second one. So what do we have left in the brackets? Uh, well, we still have 6x minus 1. We still have 1, 2x minus 1 left, because there used to be 5, and we took out the 4, so we have 1 left. Minus, notice how I multiplied 5 times 2, that's how come I got 10, times 3x squared minus x, and I close the bracket. And what I also have done is I canceled 2x minus 1 to the 4th power with the 10th power in denominator to get 6 in denominator. And usually, a rule of thumb in these problems, at the, in the final answer, the power would be one more in the denominator than um, to start with. See how we started with 5. Okay, now just left some more simplification uh, where I used the FOIL, 6x times 2x. I got the 12x squared. 
then 6x times negative 1, I got negative 6, then negative 1 times 2x got negative 2x, then negative 1 times negative 1 got positive 1, and then I distributed negative 10, so I get negative 30x squared plus 10x. And then we just collect like terms, which is 12x squared minus 30x squared gives us negative 18x squared. Then negative 6x minus 2x gives up, give us negative 8x plus 10x. We have positive 2x left and then plus 1. And so the final answer has also 2x minus 1 to the 6th power, which we keep bringing down. And that would be the final answer. Again, it looks like a complicated problem, but here is how we can complete that problem. And that's it.